Turbo Time. Pause your disc, man. This week, we're taking you back to the decade that saw the birth of grunge, the explosion of the World Wide Web, and a wave of incredible cars that are already considered classics. And no, I'm not talking about the Shredder Mobile. Welcome to the 2018 Forza Racing Championship live from Seattle, Washington. I'm Kate Osborne, and this week, we are racing our way through the 90s. After winning the last showdown, G2 Lake, the fresh prince of Forza RC, raged against the machine to find his Nirvana back at the top of the leaderboard. But Williams Racing now has a full house and they're out to set lap times that would give RL Stein goosebumps. So push those Doc Martens to the floor and hold on to those Tamagotchis. We're about to see which drivers have vanilla ice in their veins and which ones have fallen and can't get up. It's the Forza Racing Championship Wednesday Showdown. Oh, and the fun is just beginning here, Brian. Yeah. Brian Eckberg here, community manager for Forza. And of course, myself, Kate Osborne. We have some guys over there on the booth as well. But my goodness, we are kicking off the 90s here. And I can't even imagine what's going to come out of these really JDM-focused cars and these tracks that are so significant to the decade. I love the tracks. I love the cars. As you mentioned, we have half of the cars that we're going to be driving today are JDM Japanese manufacturers. <laughs> you know, this was the area when in the, the era when Initial D was becoming a thing, and Japanese manufacturers were really coming on the up, being performance-minded. Mm -hmm. We're going to see some of those cars today. I can't wait to get it started. Well, of course, before we get it started, we want to make sure everyone in the community can get involved, and we have to open up these polls because you guys can really dictate what happens to the events today. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have going on as we kick off our Wednesday show down. We are race number two pull is against that Skyline GT That's RV it. spec or that RX-7. Brian, I know you have an opinion on cars that these guys are driving. Yeah, now, if, if the community knows I love Skylines. I, one of my favorite cars is the 2002 Skyline, so I'm automatically like hardwired to love that Skyline, but we've got an RX-7 in the studio, so I'm kind of <laughs> hoping we get a, a little bit of both this week. Yeah. A little bit best of both worlds. You We'd know, I that. honestly want to see this car running on the track and what these guys can do with it. Of course, like we said, this is where you guys can get involved in our show. It's really easy to do, a lot of fun too, because you get a chance to maybe throw a couple of different things at these drivers that they maybe weren't expecting, and that has happened in these Wednesday showdowns. Absolutely, and of course, we've got great rewards as well. Here's the rewards you can get for watching us on Forza RC, taking part. Uh, love that Pro Car M1, Kate. <laughs> that is an awesome well, car. Well, of course, it says watch.forzarc.com to be involved, to get involved, to be engaged. We, of course, want to hear your feedback, your insights, and your thoughts on social media will be on line all day long. I say online, like the World Wide Web, like, I don't know, on the line. We're, we're online. <laughs> we got all sorts of cool stuff. You saw the liveried version, some of the cars we're going to be driving today. And of course, this we, th there's that Skyline, there's the Whistler Raider Cougar, the Mercury, the guys may be driving today. That's going to be awesome. And we have some driver gear too, Kate. Yeah, but this all is happening today, but it all didn't start today. It started last Sunday and actually all of our showdown here, the series too. What happened on Sunday? I think there were a couple of surprises and a few things that we weren't expecting. Absolutely, yeah. Well, there's all sorts of great racing. This is a week of action for these drivers, right? Yeah. They start with the rivals qualifiers. They get into the Saturday and Sunday races, and all sorts of things can happen. You, it's a, it's a definitely a campaign for these guys. They have to work hard week on week to make it into the Wednesday showdown. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the Sunday heat highlights. The Sunday races began with a bang, a frosty start for Chemical, slightly clipping the back of Commando, sent him loose into the airpin, giving William Seven an open invitation for third. After getting damaged, Commando's quick recovery fell short, speed off into the grass, unable to maintain speed. Meanwhile, Lage felt no pressure and comfortably took the win in the first race of the day. You could 
cut the tension with a knife. The virus getting into the back of Zermatt, ruining his race before it even started. TPR teammate Chemical wasn't about to let Virus go unpunished, chasing after Virus with Commando at his heels. The Frenchman Lage stormed away at the front, totaling 40 points from two races. Meanwhile, Veloce races, defending sixth place beautifully, keeping his bid to make the playoffs wide open. Race 3 saw the introduction of retro JDM in the form of the R33, where again, no flaw could be seen in Lage's driving. However, something about the Nissan had sparked life into the young Brit racers. He went on an overtaking spree, outdriving Asics, Seven, and Box to punch his way to 15 golden points, setting him up nicely for today's racing. In Lobby B, the pressure was high as Mitch led the way. No amount of practice could prepare the drivers for the massive understeer through 130R as Rossi nearly experienced the taste of rubber. On the final lap, an aggressive move on Davis skills for second saw a gentleman's lift from Roadrunner, who was happy to settle for third. Race 2 was an absolute carbon copy of Race 1 with Mitch pulling away at the front uncontested as Davies Schools rolled up his sleeves and went to work defending the man in red, Roadrunner. Once again it was Mitch, Davy and Roadrunner, 1, 2 and 3. There was something about this skyline that brought the drivers to life with Davies Skills keeping massive amount of pressure onto Mitch the entire race, never leaving his side. Racing with the Spect, it came down to the line with Mitch taking the checker flag, starting beside Lage on today's grid. Oh, already so much excitement. Just following along online, just within that preview, mm -hmm. and uh, Mouth Milk said, all JDM cars, wow, we're in for a treat. And of course, uh, Scott Cole from over in the distance over yonder. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he said, love you guys, be safe out there. I think we're, we're really, there's a lot of surprise, surprising things that happened last Sunday. Absolutely, and I think one of the things that we were kind of surprised at talking about before the show began was box qualifying in yeah. fourth. I know the guys on the desk are gonna break this down further, but here's a guy who's used to being on the podium, he's used to having really great results. A fourth place start for a guy like box is maybe a little bit disappointing. A big surprise, I have no doubt he'll be okay, Yeah. but it's a surprising start for well, him. Well, if there's one guy who knows how to bounce back, we do know that box can do it, and we've already seen that once already in this entire showdown. Mm -hmm. So, uh, taking a look at it, uh, kind of diving deeper into what this is all about. Let's go ahead and send it on over to the desk with our own Scott Cole and Ali Tech. Well, I appreciate it. And it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's 90s week because it's 90 something degrees in the studio or we're celebrating the Niners. <laughs> e yeah. Either way, let me bring in my partner, Ali Tack. And Ali, it's always good to have some JDM in the building. It is. It is. We finally made it to the 90s. And uh, what a great car culture we're going to celebrate this week. It's all about being modified cars and, you know, this cool street racing vibe. So I, I love it. I'm looking forward to some great racing today. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, that's a car I love. I own three of them. So uh, we'll be talking a lot about that RX-7 that's in, that, that's in the building today. Uh, you, you know, we're interesting. It's going to be some interesting races here for Europe. You always saw a, a lot of people struggling, uh, you know, out there, um, you know, on, on, on the track. And, you know, when you, when you look at this, what is it about these JDM cars that's going to give them trouble? So... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the RX-7, this is going to be race two. The real sort of JDM test will be the RX-7 versus the Skyline. The Skyline is four-wheel drive, of course. The RX-7 with rear wheel drive, a lot more weight on the Skyline, more of a medium weight car, the RX-7. So those two are going to be very different to drive. Uh, for me, the Skyline will suit Lege. The RX-7 will suit someone like Mitch. All right, let's get ready to look at this uh, race number one here. And you can see Lage, Mitch, Davy skills. That's your one, two, three. Box, as previously mentioned, already in fourth. Williams, our roadrunner, is there in fifth. And there's another Williams brother right there, Seven. Well, how does Seven measure up to his teammates? You know, he's finally coming into the Williams team, joining them. Where is he going to slot in in the pecking order there? This is the second half of the grid we're looking at right now. And I'm super excited to see Rich 92 F1 there. He's been the top privateer in the series for a long time. Hasn't made it into the Wednesday showdown so far. Big grayed out face there, man, mystery. I'm so <laughs> looking forward to seeing this guy race. Well, there's one way to earn your photo, and that's make it a Mexico City. <laughs> that's one way to do it. All right, so uh, let's, let's start to uh, talk about these the cars and the tracks that are going to be out there. Um, 
And when you talk about the future, oh, a little 90s music in the background, nice touch. What can you tell us about this car? Yeah, the Peugeot, it's a, it's a CB, yeah, Group C, absolute monster, very, very fast car, lots of downforce. It does struggle with understeer though, and uh, there's been a lot of debate about uh, yeah, the handbrake being used in this car. It is something that's gonna make you faster. It's gonna rotate the car for you. Of course, on Suzuka, it's always good to see Suzuka, one of my favorite circuits. And there's no better place to take these JDM cars that we're going to see uh, around the track. Uh, and that's a good way to start it off. A lot of twists in the turns, the S curves, take you through the spoon, back through the start finish. We're in for a real treat here in race number one as you take a look at the grid. Lage on top. We mentioned Mick, Mitch, Davy Skills, boxing fourth, so he's going to have to make some moves. Towards the rear there, Rich and Chris will have to make up some space in this race. It's all about the start for those two. Here we go. These first two turns can mean everything. Lage racing down there. And they make it through the double apex, trying to hold on. There's Lage. You see him in his blue livery out in front. And finally, we make it through the first turn here in Europe without total carnage up through those F's curves of five, six, and seven, through the Dunlop curve. And it looks like they're nicely spaced out here, Allie. Yeah, nice clean start. Everyone to get their Wednesday showdown underway without maybe slipping off the track and throwing everything away too soon. It's been beautiful from Lege, uh, the perfect opportunity from him. But now that we're starting to see people getting into their rhythm midway through lap one, what will happen? Who's gonna start closing? Who's gonna fall back for my money? Mitch is closing the gap to Lage now that he's found his rhythm. Lap one of eight. Lage out in front, Ari by a couple links on Mitch. Eight times around this amazing circuit. Of course, racing made its debut here in 1962. And I love the sound of this engine. Just, a, just a, an amazing circuit. I mean, I love Spa, I love VIR, but Suzuka's up there as well. It's an incredible track, built as a Honda Test track many, many years ago, and uh, one of the very few in the world that has a figure eight layout where the track crosses over itself. It's actually a small bridge in the second sector just after 130R, which uh, where the track crosses over uh, where it's at. Midway, well, coming into lap two now, Davy Skills, who fought so hard for a really strong qualifying position uh, this week, down to third, I want to say down to third, he's, and he started third actually, so he maintaining that position, but not maybe closing on the leaders as he might want to. Lap two of eight. We're on board here with fifth place, looking up towards fourth. That's Box trying to recover something from this weekend. He's had a little bit of a mediocre round. Brian, what's going on here? You've got an insight on the start. Well, I just wanted to take a look at the start, which is relatively clean, but we do have a replay of an incident between ASICS, Dino, and our privateer, Rich. We haven't yeah, had that replay just quite yet. We're here in the second lap of eight. Hold on with us, Brian. Okay. Just hold on right there. As you can see, them guys racing down. Here in lap two of eight, Lage out in front. And for the first time in a couple weeks, we didn't see just total carnage in those first turns. And they've sort of, Lage sort of spaced himself out. And then you got Mitch and Davy skills. That's sort of that two, three battle right now as Lage looks like he's just out for a Sunday drive. Yeah, it's that two, three battle now starting to close up. Williams Mitch in second, falling back into the jaws of Davy Skills. I mentioned before it was a great performance from him getting up so high in this Wednesday showdown, the qualifying for it. Also, though, this race will be his best chance tonight. X Class, very, very fast cars like this Peugeot, is where Davy Skills shines. So he'll be feeling at home, whereas Mitch, a lover of slightly slower cars, might find himself struggling. Let's check in with Kate to see what's going on in the show show world, Kate. Well, Velace Force One, a guy who is watching to see what happens because the, North, the Sh America Showdown is coming up later on. But he said those cars sound really cool in the external cameras. But he also mentioned that Box is under a whole lot of pressure. Thoughts on that? 
Well, you know, he's, he's riding back and forth right now. And if we're looking at it, he's sort of in the middle of that, at the, at the tail end of that second pack. He's caught up a little bit to that to second, third, and fourth drivers. And he's the kind of guy, when he's in your rear view mirror, as you can see, we got a little sandwich there with Roadrunner box there in the middle. Here these guys taking it absolutely to the limit. It's one of the three hardest things. One, one of the hardest things you can do in racing is defend at the same time as attack. And Box finding himself squished in here behind Davy Skills and just in front of Roadrunner is having to keep two different plates spinning at the same time. He wants to threaten for third, but he doesn't want to open up a gap that will uh, allow Roadrunner through. I've got to say, he'll be very thankful to be looking back and seeing a driver uh, as good as AMS Roadrunner, because you know that, uh, excuse me, Williams Roadrunner, AMS is his old team. <laughs> <laughs> he can't keep up these days, uh, because he knows he won't go for any crazy moves. And there it is, Roadrunner being gifted the position, and uh, yeah, he doesn't need a second invitation for that. Heading back across the start-finish line. Lap four of eight. Here in this 93 Peugeot. Sounds absolutely incredible. Box currently right along in fifth place now. Rossi in 10th, A6 in 11th. Chris is rounding out the top 12. Right now, he's all the way in the back. Lage running very fast up front. He's starting to really stretch out this lead. Let's check back in with Brian Eckberg. What do you got for us? Well, I think we've got that replay queued up. We had an incident early on in the race. We talked about a relatively clean start, but here's a three wide with Dino, Rich, and Asics getting caught out there. Asics actually ran into Rich a little bit there, but they swapped places. Asics now in 11th place, Rich in 9th place. So a little bit of contact wasn't disastrous, but more, Ali, more bad luck for Asics. It's bad luck for Asics especially. Yeah, I mean, Rich holding his line there on the inside, more or less justified, I think, in being there kind of just held his position and Asics spun around the outside. But really great to see what Rich 92 F1 is up to. I'm super excited by this story. Uh, he's still back in ninth, though. I mean, what, what do you reckon for moving forward in this race well, for Rich? He, he's got to be feeling good that he's up to ninth. I will say, this car, so much power, so easy to get it out of shape. I'm surprised all of them kept that car pointing forward <laughs> three wide in that corner. So good job by all three. All right, Brian, appreciate you. As they come back around one more time through 18, back to the start finish line. Really, the battles right now is that 3 4 5 spot. Lage running nice right now. You see Mitch there in second, but this is where the battle is. Davy Skills, Roadrunner, and Box. You've already seen Roadrunner put a nice move on Box. They're able to move up to that fourth spot. Yeah, what a fantastic battle this is. Super close box. Slipping back behind Roadrunner. Remember, he just lost the rear, a little bit too much power on the final corner. And now he's trying to regain that fourth position that he had at the start of this race. The big mover, of course, is Roadrunner starting this race back in fifth position. He's made his way up one, and he wants a second. He wants that podium. Well, he'll take it down to the hairpin. That's turn 11. Up to the tunnel bin, you can hear the Little bit of contact there. Puff of smoke because Roadrunner modulates that throttle back onto onto the back straight. And these three drivers now heading back towards Spoon Curb. One of Schumacher's favorite corners around this track. Very, very difficult. Double left-hander. It's got an adverse camber, so the track slopes away from the apex on the inside. Wait and wait and wait to put the throttle down. Those three managing it absolutely beautifully, though. Yeah, David Skill's doing a nice job right now, holding on to that third position. You saw the contact between Box and Roadrunner. And Roadrunner going a little wide there. Box trying to throw a move. Not successful though, Roadrunner able to recover. Back around lap six now. Look at Davy Skill's line here along the straight. He's doing two things there. For one, he doesn't want Roadrunner tucking into his draft. He doesn't want to give him any extra speed down that straight. At the same time, he's saying to Roadrunner, he's clearly signaling, don't even try the dive bomb. Don't even think <laughs> about it. I've got that line covered for now. I'm going to stay in third, and you're going to have to do it somewhere else in the track. 
you know both Davy skills are rotor got to be careful because box is just sitting back there if you get caught up in a tangle next thing you know the German might go right by you into that third position as right now lays out in front Mitch is in second and so the battle you're looking at right now is this three four five in our first race of the day lap six of eight Road back down snipping. to the hairpin yeah Oh, it's got me standing. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Roadrunner nosing his way around there. Very little space in this section of the track, so he's going to have to pull out something really, really impressive. What are some spots that we should be looking at in these next three laps for overtaking on this track? The main spot will be that last chicane. Spoon is very, very difficult. I mean, we saw uh, Razor JD end with a Scandinavian flick into there <laughs> on Twitter. That was just something very, very impressive. These guys aren't trying to replicate it. Uh, the very heavy braking zone after 130R, though, is a great opportunity. 130R, a fast corner in which you can just lose a little bit of ground and give someone a run. That's what we saw from Roadrunner last time. And uh, Box trying to get through. He might have another chance here around the outside. Road when I get to a little bit loose again. 3.6 miles around this track. Couple more laps to go. Davy Skill is able to stretch and out by a couple car lengths. So now it's going to be a road run box in that fourth and fifth position. You talked about that exchange of turn 16, 17, and 18. And there is box to the inside, and he will overtake Roadrunner here in lap seven. Roadrunner. Being let go there by the, the downforce of that car. He was relying. He had so much faith in the car, pushing itself into the pavement. A little bit of a wiggle mid-corner. He had to steer to correct it way out wide. And that's a, a nice, nice gap there for Box. So with two laps remaining, these guys have traded positions multiple times through this first race of the day. Two more races to come here in Europe. And obviously here on a Wednesday, North America will be coming up a little later on this evening. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, a little 9 in there as well. As we go down to turn 13, 14 through the spoon curve, you talked about it before, Ali, it's a double left-hander. All this fighting between Roadrunner and Box has allowed the battle behind to catch up with them. This now extends all the way from fourth position back to eight. And that's Rich 92 F1 in his first race in the Wednesday showdowns. The guy we've been talking about, this privateer at the very top of the Forza Racing Championship, is now sniffing. I mean, what could almost be a podium position if everything in front of him goes wrong for the other drivers? For now, though, he's got to keep it clean and take the opportunities he's given. Well, he's currently sitting in 28th in his ranking. He's had 21 races this year, but he's not found his way to this level as we head to the final lap lap eight of eight riding along with rich 92 f1 making his debut here on a wednesday coming to you live from seattle just the first race of the day around suzuka we have to take a moment just to look at how impressive this is rich 92 f1 is out there fighting with the very, very top, the premium teams of the Forza Racing Championship, the likes of Veloce, the likes of Williams, uh, the likes of Noble uh, in the case of Box. He's here representing them not from a community team standpoint, not from a grassroots team, but as a privateer, as somebody just approaching this championship, practicing by himself, coming out week on week, and he's here fighting at the very, very top. While the middle of the pack goes through turn nine, Lage has already gone through turn 11, through the hairpin, he's back up to the spoon. So it's him and Mitch out in front. Davy Skill still holding on to that third place, and there is Box. Made the move on Roadrunner in lap seven. Roadrunner takes a peek to the inside here on 13 and 14. In the final lap. And if this holds up, it'll be Lage's 25th win on the season. He's been on the podium 33 times. And he made it look easy. If you don't get him on those first turn or two, I'm adding the second turn in because it's a double right hander on Suzuka on the start. He's just going to run away from you, and that's what he's done right here. He'll cross the line. Mitch will come in behind him in second. Davy Skills will hold on. It will Rich 92 be able to hold on to that eighth spot here in his debut. And not a bad start to the day. <laughs> well, 
amazingly clean in a very difficult car to drive. Now, when I say difficult, I'm speaking personally. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> there. But you did see some of those guys struggling out of corners. Uh, that car has got so much power, it's easy to get it out of shape coming out of a corner. These guys, of course, are the best in the world. It's not as big an issue for them, but a relatively clean start, all things considered. Very clean racing, and actually, mm -hmm. I'm surprised by that a little bit. How just how great the racing was in a car that's very, very fast. We usually see people just kind of single file, a little bit processional. Mm. But yeah, I mean, Roadrunner Lots and Box there going yeah. to town. Yeah, action yeah. exactly. We, we definitely want to focus on Roadrunner and Box because we saw a lot of back and forth there, especially at Turn One. It just it, it kind of it's mind blowing the way these guys just dominated Turn Eight and Nine. A lot of when you come to Nine and you're you're going down the hairpin, a lot of you got to really cut back on your speed. But these guys just sweep through nine in this, in this race car like it's nothing. Yeah, Suzuka is one of those tracks that has a little bit of everything. Almost every kind of corner, a little bit of elevation changes, slow corners, fast corners. These guys are showing their skill. Suzuka is a great showcase of skill for these guys for sure. We've talked about that a little bit, but let's talk <laughs> about Rich 92F1. I want to talk about Rich 92F1. <laughs> Let me say how great he is. How good was that? Come on. Like, hey, first time on the big stage. up to eighth. But it's not like he came out of nowhere. I mean, he's 28th <laughs> in ranking. He's just, he's missed, missed this opportunity to be here on a Wednesday. Let's take a look at the replay. It was a wild one that had Lage running very fast, and most of the battles were happening right here in the middle of the pack, Brian. Here's that moment with Asics and Rich sort of surviving here, contact with Asics there. He actually made up one more play, so he was in ninth there, ended eighth provisionally, of course. Like you said, Ali, great result. But here's that battle, Ali, between Roadrunner and Box. It seemed like it was happening every time they came into turn one. Uh, Roadrunner getting past Box here. They were just going back and forth, and Davy Skills was having nothing of it. Davy Skills, yeah, yeah. I mean, he almost looked threatened by Roadrunner for a long time mm -hmm. until hit Roadrunner and Box started really attacking each other. This move here at the back of the track. A little bit of contact there. A little bit of rubbing, actually. Yeah, yeah I didn't yeah. notice that in the first one. And watch. look here, Box putting the exact same move that Roadrunner put on him a couple of laps prior. <laughs> and provisionally, this is where it stood. Well, there was a few times where Roadrunner did have a lot of momentum and did go wide. So I think Box was just being patient here. And you see a little bit of incident there with Dino right there at the end that pushed him off on, on the side. That was actually in the final lap of the race. Mm -hmm. uh, so we might have a few things to look at. It, it looked clean, yep. but really that last mile, mile and a half, there was a few bumping and grinding there. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised there wasn't more. The last mile and a half, as you say, that's the one that you know, decides everything, isn't it? It doesn't make a difference if you're at the front uh, you know, midway through the race. It makes a difference when the checkered flag falls. So maybe a little bit of desperation creeping in there when uh, the, the, the time has started reaching zero. And I wonder, too, if they were conscious of the car they were in and worried about contact with that because it's so easy to get that car out of shape. Right. Could have played into the fact that they were just playing it safe. This r first race, let's just get some points. Yeah. Well, we couldn't see them all cross the line, so let's go over to Kate and see what what the provisional results are for race number one. Yeah, I think, Scott, you just nailed it. It is good to see them all cross the, cross the line, and I think that is the important thing as we take a look at these provisional results. I think there's a few things that we'll see shake out here as we look at the final results, but as it stands right now, Lage with his 25th win of the ever, uh, second, Mitch, uh, Davy Skills in third, Box fourth, uh, RR fifth, seven, six, uh, Razor seven, and, and so on and so forth. You know, I think it was interesting, gentlemen over there, uh, that the commentary there at the end was for Davy Skills, and the fans that he had inside the chat was unreal. Why was that significant for a guy like Davy Skills? Well, when you think about Davy Skills, I mean, he's been not only a, you know, a favorite among the drivers, but among the community. For some reason, when Davy Skills does well, that, that puts a smile on the community's face. Yeah, he's, uh, he's been around for a long time as Davy Skills. Uh, absolute top of the game, maybe back in Forza 2, Forza 3, those days took a little bit of a break from Forza and came back when the RC started. And this is almost one of the first times we've really seen him up there battling at the front of the pack. He's got incredible pace, we all know it, but inconsistency has dogged him throughout this season. Well, you know, the interesting thing that I saw in that graphic is we can't get my man Rich. We can't get my, is he from Parts <laughs> Unknown? We, we, we don't have a flag <laughs> for him, Kate? Come on, let's, get, let's, let's find out at least where he's from. Same point, and I really, ex I mean, I want everyone to get involved on our social, you know, community. And I think it's the right thing, gentlemen, for these guys to say, where are you from? What's the, what's the story? Why Forza for you? Make sure you let us know on social media. And I think as a privateer, too, we want to know what, 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 Rich, what do you like to eat? What's your breakfast? The meal of champs. Anyways, car walk around. It's time to dive a little deeper into what car is filling up our studio and why it's such a tribute in the 90s.
This 1997 Mazda RX-7 has an R Magic body kit and adorable flippy lights. It's so 90s, a little slice of that street racer downtown Tokyo vibe that for many JDM loving cool kids defines this decade. Under the hood is the legendary Wankel rotary engine. It revs high and while it's down on torque, it's renowned for smooth power delivery. Now, Japanese manufacturers had a gentleman's pack throughout the 90s, leaving crazy horsepower figures to the Americans, they limited their sports compacts to just 276 brake horsepower. And while that's a figure the RX-7 matches to the dot, it's how the car gets there that counts. Mazda paired their rotary with the first ever production sequential twin turbocharger. That's a little turbo for the low revs, and a big one that steps in once the car's really getting wound up. And the best bit is that the car loves that. Mazda actually recommend redlining the RX-7 to keep the engine healthy. And people certainly did. From the street racers of the 90s through the stunt drivers in the Fast and the Furious franchise to Mad Mike's crazy drift quad rotor, and indeed this little monster right here is just out racing the other day, the RX-7 found a special place in all car lovers' hearts. This car is one reason I love the 90s. I think it's safe to say, Ali, that we all love the 90s. I don't even know, are most of these people who were born in the 90s are out there? Do you guys remember the 90s? I, I know we do. I definitely <laughs> remember the 90s. <laughs> Anyways, the final results are in. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at uh, the global leaderboards. First and foremost, let's go ahead and have that conversation about what has happened here within series number two. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is uh, the Wednesday showdown from last week. Now, remember, at the end of the broadcast two weeks ago, we had some penalties, Ali, that have since been overturned. Yeah, exactly. So there's a penalty review system. The drivers can appeal uh, penalties that are applied to them. Vanquish, in particular, was given a penalty in the final race there, uh, which he came across the line in, in the lead of. Mm -hmm. Later, marked down to, I think, third or fourth position, he appealed that penalty, appealed it successfully, and he's been reinstated as the winner of that race. Somebody else who appealed their result was Force One, uh, who disconnected, I think, just pulled the line. Right, remember we were looking at that, we are like, what happened to Force One? Because right. he finished fairly well, but his result was, uh, they thought he disconnected too early. He turned in a video file, said, yes, I did finish the race, therefore that, penalty, that DNF was crossed off the, off the mark as well. Exactly right, so these two guys both going through the appeal system, making sure their results are all, all up to scratch and everything's working fine. And yeah, coming out of it with slightly better results than maybe we saw at the end of last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there are definitely a lot of big changes as we are hearing in the series two right now. And I think that's a really important thing to note as we take a closer look at the global leaderboard and some of the stories that are kind of creating, putting it, I mean, putting the numbers on the board right now. Absolutely. We've got stories all over this board, Alex. We've got a new name for the global number one, and we've got three Williams guys, now three, back to back to back. Yeah, uh, that, that global number one, exactly. That's that Zoom, that's the same as Hard VR, the same as Impulse once upon a time. I think you have Zoom before as well. Make uh, up your mind. Yeah, make, make up your mind. <laughs> so this guy, uh, yeah, Zoom is up there at the top of the leaderboard, now with the Sauber team, absolutely dominating. He's from LATAM and doing an amazing job out there. And then Mr. Jack, of course, we go ahead and take a closer look at some of that. I mean, yeah. difficulty with the competition. Mr. Jack uh, put out a tweet this week, a member of the TX3 team saying that he was pretty much done. He, I think he's feeling, feeling the effects of the long Forza RC season, Ali. Mm. It's a super long season, and we can't forget what an incredible feat all the drivers are doing out there. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming out week after week. It's been months of this now, and they're still performing, still at this incredible level. Just look at that Peugeot a second yeah. ago. What a difficult car to drive and what great racing they put up. Um, so, yeah, it, it's tiring. Take a break from time to time. I hope yeah. Mr. Jack sticks it out. I do way. too. He's such a he's such a nice guy and a, a talented driver. It might have been an expression of frustration in the moment. Maybe he'll be back. Maybe he's done. Who knows? Personally, I think we all feel like yeah. take some time off. Come on back. 
we, we want to see you in the Forza RC. And then I think there's a lot of people who do need that time. We've seen a couple of people who have set out throughout, you know, the season how it is already. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, another thing that we don't really address is the fact that this is both mentally, physically, and emotionally draining and can be. It is a race championship, and that's what these guys are all, you know, they're looking towards. But, but one thing to note, too, we do have a, we do have a top 10, um, a driver in the top 10 for the first time, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. THR. Yeah. yeah, so THR doing a great job, doing really interesting moves this week. Uh, they've changed around their lineup a little bit and recruited two new members. Uh, one of them is Vanquish uh, from NA, and the other guy is, it was McQueen from NA, but now he's changed his name Sky. to Skyline. That's right. I think yeah. just to pander to <laughs> support from you. He's doing it for you. me because he does. Yeah. yeah, thank you, McQueen. I appreciate <laughs> one that. One of these That's days, perfect. guys, we're all going to change our names as well, <laughs> just to mix it up a little bit. Anyways, the Wednesday showdown, the final results are in. Take a look at those. Anything surprise you guys out of that? No, I mean, no penalties. We talked about the fact that uh, we had some contact there. We saw some especially aggressive racing towards the end of the race, but the adjudicators looked at it, decided no penalties, so the provisional results become the final results. Well, another time for everyone to get involved in our Forza community here today. It's another poll, and what is it that we're going to see for these drivers here today? Oh, oh Brian's baby. big deep breath <laughs> as much as he loves these cars. <laughs> Your chance to pick and choose which one you'd like to see these drivers race out there today, that Cunning Racing, is, Cunningham Racing 300ZX, or perhaps your also not favorite Radar Cougar. I XR7. drove a Mercury in the 90s. I know what it was like to drive a Mercury in the <laughs> 90s. Of course, this is a very different type of Mercury, but, uh, you know, Mercury, what can you say? You know, my dad wanted my first car to be a Cougar, and I actually, I, I think I may have cried. <laughs> I, I think going to high school, it's like, I just don't want it to be a Cougar. Now, they're all right. We'll see how it goes. Okay, gentlemen at the desk, how do you see this race going down? Well, um... Hmm, interesting. <laughs> they, did, they, they actually didn't pick the car I wanted to pick. Uh, so, spoiler there. I happen to own three of them, and you guys can't <laughs> pick them. Uh, two of them I was okay letting go, but one of them I was an idiot. I was a young man and should have never let it go. Um, Life for crap, man. That's yeah, that's how it goes. How it goes. Yeah. I had VIN number 02 <laughs> in, in that car. It, it, it was crazy. All right. We'll have Uncle Scott's story time later on. Let's take a look <laughs> at race number two. Uh, and they go with the Skyline, the 1997 GTR V-Spec. Okay, it's, it's, it's a great car as well, and it's probably superior over the RX-7. The big difference between this car and the RX-7 is the all-wheel drive. It's a little bit heavier as well. Uh, someone who's going to like both of those things is G2 Lay. She tends to dominate in all-wheel drive cars. Heading off to uh, Hockenheim, though. Hockenheim opened up 1931, and this is an amazing track. We've seen it a couple times. It'll be interesting to see how they handle turn 11, 12 on through to the Nord Curve. When they head back across that start-finish line, Hockenheim's a good one. Skyline is a good one, so we should be in for a great race here in race number two. Taking a look at the grid, Lage out in front, Mitch in second, Davy Skill still holding on strong. Box and forth, and there's Roadrunner. So, although we did have some changes up and down the ladder, really the top five stay the same. The top five, yeah, they do stay the same. I and mean, of course, we had starting order there from Lage, Mitch, and Davy Skills. Uh, seeing Rich in 11th there for me is, is surprising. I thought he was a little bit further up the field. And here we go. We are lights out on Hockenheim and Lage around that Nor curve. We'll head down to turn number two. And this Nissan has an amazing sound. I'm with Brian. I like I, I like the 2002 version, but this one's not bad. <laughs> Slow and steady through turns two and three, coming up on four now, and they'll straighten it out. Straight here, Hockenheim is long and very uh, slightly curved to the left. It's called the Parabolica. We're heading down towards the hairpin for the first time, which is definitely the biggest overtaking opportunity on this track, and you can see is that box and Davy Skills getting into it in the fight for third? I got a good feeling about Davy Skills on this track. As long as, at some point, you got to stop Lage from getting all this clean air because when he's, there's no one better in all of Forza, and then I'm going back years, than this guy right here, the Frenchman, when he's got clean air, no one in front of him, he, he's somehow just able to block out all the pressure. 
Exactly. Mitch, I don't think, had a great chance in race one to get past him. I don't think Mitch really suits an X-Class car. Now we've brought that volume down a little bit, going back down to C-Class Sport GT icons. Mitch has more of a chance, I think, to throw a move on Lage. But as you say, do it now. Do it while you've got an opportunity, because if you wait, Lage will take that opportunity from you. Had a couple of Nissans over the years. Never had the Skyline. 300CX is about as far as I go. So I'm OK if, if that Nissan happens to show up again in race number three. We're in race number two now on Hockenheim. It's going to be seven laps around this track. And coming up on one of those big corners to watch. 15 at 16. Back to the start finish line. See, not as much space as Lage had in the earlier race. And that's due to you got a car that just isn't as fast. You have a lower horsepower car, low torque. And I think Mitch is going to be able to hang in there for most of this race. There's a big difference between hanging in there by your fingernails, even closing a gap to the car in front, and managing to throw the move onto somebody else. Not easy at all to do. Mitch is going to have to be brave here. We've seen him make great moves before. We've seen him send it. I think he can, he just needs the opportunity. Here in lap number two, he's running that Pennzoil livery. Mitch seven laps around Hockenheim, 2.84 miles, 17 turns. Of course, this is smack dab in Germany. And a good turn there by Davy Skills. Box, Box going to the outside, and Davy Skills will slide in. They are back into number three. Yeah, those, these two have been having a great scrap there. Davy Skills with the over-under as Box throws the move down the inside into the hairpin. It looks like Box has got some pace on Davy Skills here, uh, but not able to get past just yet. Davy Skills is uh, Manish's favorite, it looks like, from the chat. He's calling out that this is going to be his territory. <laughs> well, he's got some catching up to do. Saw some moves as they were heading down to seven through the Mercedes term. And now we'll go up through 12, 13, and 14. Let's check in with Kate to see what's going on on social media. Davy Skills, what a conversation that we've been having already today. And as Melish said, this is Davy's territory. I've got a feeling Mitch and Lage are going to be looking over their shoulder. However, at a track like this, how challenging can that be knowing that you got to look forward, but you're constantly looking back? You're, you're, you're quoting me in one of your social media hits. You're quoting Mellish. I don't, I, it feels like cheating <laughs> at some point. You just can't get enough Who of you guys. Who else is out there? <laughs> <laughs> is it just me and Mellish watching this thing? That can't be true. Laps three of seven. There's Davy Skills right there. And you know, it's, it's so tough to catch up to that second position when you got box right in your rear view mirror. It is. It is. Davy Skills doing a good job here, looking under control. I'm going to say also one of the uh, one of the sexiest cars out there. That skyline with uh, the AB graphics paint on it. Really pretty those colors, and uh, yeah, doing a great job uh, putting those paints together for TPR. Davy Skills up in third and holding back. I mean, someone we have to remember used to be a TPR driver, Box. Someone, an old teammate of Davy Skills, and they're good friends. Before making that move over to Noble. Great esports organization that covers a ton of games. Was so happy to see them join the Forza ranks. There's been a ton of team news over the last couple of weeks as this little thing we call the Forza RC continuing to grow on the verge of exploding. It's lap three of seven, and neither of these battles have separated. No. We've got Mitch and Lage fighting for the lead. Davy Skills and Box fighting for third position, that last step on the podium. For oh. my money, if Mitch can hold with Lage, he can make a move on Lage. If he's done it this far, maybe he can take it to the end of the race. Well, now Davy Skills has got a little bit of room on Box, but you can see this one-two battle between Lage and Mitch. They went back and forth in Series 1, and Lage desperately needing to come out and dominate. Remember, he missed week one here of Series 2. Testing the track limits there, coming to the outside as we sweep around and come right back to the start-finish line once again. Three times around the circuit, lap 
Four of seven now. It's all about accuracy in this car. Really sort of zoom in on the track, see every little tiny detail of where they're placing it, where they're putting their tires in the braking zones, how much apex, how close to the apex they're getting, how much curb they're riding over. It's every little tiny detail of the way that these drivers handle their cars that makes them find speed around this track. That's how they're doing it. Check in with Kate one more time. Kate, what's going on? Well, Box is obviously doing all he can to get in the top three today. Clutchell said Box, Box is so aggressive. And Wormburner in 1980 said Box equals dirty dive bomber. <laughs> is he being aggressive or is he being maybe a little overboard? I what don't do know. Wormburner might be a Roadrunner fan out there <laughs> <laughs> after that last race. Appreciate it. Lap four of seven. And riding along with Box right now. He's got Davy Skills in front of him. 1-2 is a battle, 3-4-5 is a battle. Who's going to be on the podium? Let's bring in uh, Brian Eckberg right now. Brian, what's going on? Well, we haven't seen a lot of dicing or passing, but we have seen some interesting stuff with the top four and their lap times. Mitch, or Lage is running a 201 best lap. Mitch just broke into the two flat. And uh, Davey and ba Box right behind him are in the 202s. So you can tell Lage, of course, very comfortable up front. Mitch got a lot of pace, but Davey and Box kind of need to pick it up if they want to even stay within shooting distance. Yeah, it seems right now Lage pulling Mitch around this circuit. And as we mentioned before, one and two a battle, three, four, five a battle. And it, you even have six, that's racers from Veloce starting to catch up a bit. But it's Lage and Mitch for these next three laps. Lap five of seven. That says so much to me that Mitch is able to beat Lage on lap time. Dipping into the second below him, he's, of course, following Lage. It's always, to a degree, <laughs> easier to follow yes, another car. Yes, 100%. But, but beating Lage at a lap time any day of the week is basically impossible. <laughs> it's the hardest thing you can do on Forza Motorsport, and that's why there's two people in this race who are, you know, in a pack of their own. Um, and seeing that Lage, is, that Mitch, Mitch, excuse me, is able to do it, says a lot to me and makes me wonder whether or not we're going to see a move toward the end of this race. Well, that's, you know, every time they come out of turn four here, Lage has the higher exiting speed. And so when you come down this straight all the way down to the hairpin, it's, it's very comfortable for, for Lage at that point. Mitch, at some point, is going to have to put bumper to bumper coming out of three and four to try to keep that pace if he's going to have any chance at making a move. This is, I mean, this is three or four car lengths right here. Exactly. And when you're following a car in front, you're always looking for, uh, for little mistakes that they make lap on lap, little foibles of their driving or weaknesses that you can exploit to make an overtake. Um, looking for weaknesses in Lage is, uh, Lage is driving, is trying to, I guess, find teeth in a hen's mouth. It's, it's very difficult to do because uh, there aren't very many of them. Rossi has moved himself into seventh. Seven is an eighth. Rich running along at ninth, A6 in tenth. But Lage and Mitch, two and a half more laps of absolute. Great battling coming up on 13, 14, and 15. That's Sud Curve. Turn 16, that's all about the exiting speed once again, something that Lage continues to just dominate Mitch on as he comes out once again, another couple car lengths. At this point, he's, I mean, I'm impressed with a two minute lap time around this circuit. And Lage right now just really eight hundredths of a second ahead of Mitch. It's plenty of time uh, on the track. You can see the few car lengths there will stop Mitch from throwing any kind of move on uh, on this lap, on lap six of seven. If you're box here, this is this is your home track. Hockenheim, Germany. I'm not even I'm not sure if he's made the trip. Down there to the this Mecca of a circuit and his home country. There to the inside, you knew it was coming. Ooh. Box. He rehearsed it, he rehearsed it a few times, and I think he would have wished 
that he pulled it off a little bit more cleanly than he ultimately did. Bit of a dive bomb there on Davy Skills, and I wonder if the adjudicators will take a look at that. Roadrunner, though, keeping his nose squeaky clean by not taking part in that action. Well, box. It's going to be interesting if all this sticks. But Roadrunner doing a nice job grabbing it back. Davy Skills will grab it back. Maybe that alone will appease the marshals. That that overtake eventually did not stick. That's what they're always looking for. Was advantage gained? Was advantage gained? And certainly uh, in that little play that we saw there, Box throwing it down the inside of Davy Skills and Roadrunner sneaking through. Uh, Box himself did not take away any on-track positions. Who knows though? The marshals may be looking at it on a move-by-move -move basis. But now it's Davy Skills and Roadrunner fighting for third. Once again, Lage out in front. Mitch is in second. They'll come back to the start finish line just one more time. Two more minutes to go around this circuit. It's final lap time and Mitch needs to make the move if he wants to take that top position on the podium. If he wants to win this week, he's going to have to start getting ahead of Lage. He can do it. He's got the lap time. We've seen that. These two drivers are combined this season for 67 podiums in the top three here in Europe. These have been your heroes. Two dominant drivers, and we're very much in Lage's home turf in this car, at least, the style of car that it is. So if Mitch can take a win here, that will certainly raise the, uh, the Frenchman and the Leeds eyebrows a little bit, I think. Except for the hairpin in a maybe turn eight, you haven't seen Mitch really have an opportunity to overtake Lage at any point going around this German circuit. We've seen Box throw a couple moves that didn't stick. Didn't see much of racers, but he actually raced pretty well. And here we come around Mercedes through nine and ten. Is there an opportunity coming down to mobile one? Turn 11 on the horizon. Final oh, lap. Difficult. Such a difficult corner with the gravel on the outside. Everyone pushing like crazy, using all the track that they can. It's all the way up to the AstroTurf there on the outside for Lege, and maybe losing a couple of hundreds there on Mitch. Well, you know he's got the defensive line up around 12. Here comes 13 and 14. To the left, back to the right. Coming off of 15 and 16, the sub curve. And Lage looks like he's going to hold the door once again on Mitch with them, turn for turn, step for step, but almost a perfect race around this circuit for Lage. And provisionally, it's going to be Lage and Mix in that one and two. We'll see provisionally how that three, four, five battle ended up. But uh, Brian, r really the only chances that we saw was Box throwing a couple moves, but Mitch really didn't have a chance. Yeah, you really think about this is a track that's ripe for dive bombing. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen at the hairpin. We saw some action at the, at the uh, first lap, but for the most part, these guys spread out, and it was, a, it was a hot lap battle for a lot of these guys. And yes, I was thinking as we were watching this race, I'm like, we talk about Box, and we talk about what a great season he's had, obviously Series 1 winner. Seems like he's a little vulnerable today. He feels a little weak to me. He's, he's let Roadrunner buy him a couple of times. He had an incident here with uh, getting passed. I don't know if it's necessarily, say, danger signs for Box, but this doesn't seem like the Box we've seen so far in Series 2. It's a little bit changed, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. back, on the back on the grid, uh, just slightly in the qualifying for this round. It makes me kind of wonder, you know, either he's um, yeah, off pace, losing momentum, heading into the Series 2 playoffs, which he'll very likely you know, qualify for, mm. um, or maybe he's just holding a little bit back, just getting some emotional reserves happening there and saying, you know, I'm going to energize myself, maybe not put the hours of practice in and make sure that I have uh, that energy to expend in Mexico. Well, real talk, you guys know, I mean, qualifying is everything. We don't, we don't actually cover qualifying enough, mm. in my opinion, because you put box out there in one and you put Lage back to fourth, and I think you would see similar results. Let's take a look mm. at the replay here in race number two around Hockenheim in that Nissan Skyline. Yeah, and there's there's box we're looking at right there. Here's where we are getting four wide around the hairpin. I mean, this is kind of what you uh, want to see, but no 
no disasters there at the Hairpin, which is, as we were talking about, a, a prime real estate for dive bombing there. There's Davy Skills sort of doing the under move on box there. And uh, after that, as we talked about, Lage and Mitch just hot lapping. Yeah, I mean, uh, we saw Dino a couple times today getting himself off the track. Uh, and a move like that just never going to work. It's never going to stick. You lose so much. You lose so much momentum. There. Your angle is all right. Is is all wrong coming out of the exit there. So it's easy for Davy Skill, who has a much gentler path out of the exit, to just you know tuck in under and take off. And I think it's okay for Box that he, you know, fall back those couple positions that he gained. He was trying to throw a move even on Roadrunner after he got away with one. Mm. Uh, I think since he fell back to fifth. You know, now you have the opportunity to be like, okay, all right, well, hopefully the marshals, that, ap that appeased them. We were talking about that. <laughs> Let's check in with Kate with the provisional results. Wow, Wade, there was a whole lot of action, not only within that race, but within the, the stream and people commenting on it. Let's go take a look at the provisional results and add a couple of uh, comments from the drivers out there today. It was interesting that uh, JSR Rossi said, I was so rubbish in the last half of the race, and Seven Bam says he can't stand to be pushed wide every blank time. It happened five times on the single race. But then you take a look up the, there at the top, and of course you have Lage there who was so smooth. Consistency in, in being smooth was his strength there today. And Mitch there in second, who people on social were commenting that he's a beast. And then you had RR in third, Davy Skills in fourth, Box down in fifth, Razors in sixth, Rossi seven, Chris eight. You know, I think, guys, the big question is what happened to, uh, you know, Rich 92? Well, at least we got his British flag up there, all right? So, th so that's one check. Welcome to the Wednesday. We know where you're from now, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, I'm going to put it in perspective. Tenth is pretty good. Yeah. In this field of 12, in this <laughs> lobby of 12, uh, tenth is pretty daggum good. I mean, part of the scoring that we do for the Forza Racing Championship when we do the world ranking is to balance the different regions uh, compared to how competitive they are. So, you know, maybe there's slightly less very, very fast drivers in Asia than there are in, in Europe. And I can tell you that Europe is the most competitive of all the regions. Incredibly fast drivers here. So tenth in Europe, uh, I mean, that's top 20 in the world, most likely. So Rich 92 F1 doing a great job here, slipping down one position, but he's got the uh, reverse grid race now to, uh, to really bring it home. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll see what he does with that 10th position when they flip the script, Kate. I'm going to take a quick look at that leaderboard and see how this is all shimmying out as two races are down for the day. looking pretty pretty good. I think the big question that we're going to be coming away from uh, before we see the final results is if Fox will get penalized. And GG Racing said, I think Fox won't get penalized. He just late braked and next cornered, he waited for him to pass for that. He is innocent. So I think it'll be interesting to see how all that shimmies out. Well, it's time now that we take a break from some racing from the action of the 90s, which I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty disappointed about it. But let's go ahead and uh, take a quick break here for a word with our sponsors. Brian, I know that gets you so Play excited. Oh, man, that's right up my alley. That's <laughs> the Formula Drift car pack. As it said there in the trailer, this is a car pack that's coming to Forza Horizon 4 and Forza Motorsport 7. Super cool. Just announced it last week. 
Pre-order Forza Horizon 4 digitally, and you get the pack in both games. At launch for Forza Horizon 4, and coming this fall for Forza Motorsport 7. And that trailer, shout out to our media team, that trailer was incredible. That shot over the hill when the car, oh man, don't even get me started. <laughs> I'll talk an hour about that thing. It's incredible. All the slideies as well. <laughs> yeah. They're all going sideways all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Great lineup of cars. I mean, we've got, we've got uh, I love that pack because it's representative of the, the Formula Drift from mm -hmm. different eras, all the way back to the 90s which is appropriate, right, of course, for our show today, mm -hmm. up to, uh, you know, the, the, the Malou, which is essentially a drifting truck, which I love. Super cool. Love Super it. cool. Ali, I'd like to see you go drifting. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good. It's mostly, like, loud noises. <laughs> <laughs> you right. make the noises yeah. in the car? Yeah. <laughs> Screaming. <laughs> yeah. oh, silent. It's not even turned on. <laughs> All right, so there's been some big news here. We have a couple of uh, new drivers, new faces. Let's go ahead and... Yeah, 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 THR, for instance. Yeah, we've got uh, uh, Skyline. We talked about this earlier. McQueen has become Skyline. Vanquish has been picked up by THR. THR is not necessarily a new team, right, Ali? No, no, THR yeah, have been, been around for a while, yeah. yeah. Team Highlands Racing, a very big team uh, in the Oceanic region, especially. A lot of them into their V8 racing, and they take part in community racing down there. Um, Skyline and Vanquish, though, were the first members of THR's sort of pro team. I was chatting to mm. Flip Mode, uh, yeah. Yeah, Andy from, uh, from the playoffs, who we saw there about, about the team. And he's saying that you know, they've got them in this sort of building out a pro side to THR uh, to really represent them at the very top of Forza. Mm. And what a great job they're doing. Great start uh, for these guys. A great building blocks for, to build a team into the right. Forza RC. I love these two guys. You know, we've seen these guys have had some, some penalty problems in the past, but new name. Um, you know, they're looking to start over with THR and, and, and both definitely have skill. Well, we're, we're almost overdue talking about Vanquish and, and McQueen a little bit. Vanquish and Skyline, as he's now <laughs> called. Um, <laughs> we're overdue it because they're, in the first series, they were both penalized a lot. Mm. But now in series two, they're starting to drive a lot more safely. They're not getting penalized as much, at very least. So if they're driving more dangerously, then they're not getting caught doing right. it. Um, but that's the point, you know, then, and they're really reforming the way they're driving. So really great mm. to see. You have to wonder what, what, a goal, what, a, what the goals are for a team like THR. Mm. Obviously, they're not going to be competing with the Lages yet. Um, but you wonder what their goals are as a team. Is it all about the team? Is it all about building up their drivers? It's an interesting conversation for a relatively for young sure. team. For you sure. know, and I think it's an important thing to note that this is not the only team that this is happening mm. to. The, you know, to start mentoring and growing these drivers in a place that they really want them to be. We have Williams Racing, and, and there's some changes there. Yeah. Right. We've seen, of course, Williams has Roadrunner and Mitch, but they've added another heavy hitter to their lineup, Ali, in seven. Yeah, Seven um, is a very, very fast driver indeed. He, I think, placed fourth in the Seattle playoffs. You can see that his global position is sixth currently, so he's in a very good standing. This guy's sixth in the world. Right. I mean, he, he reminds me of how we talk about Venom, sort of a silent assassin. This guy is a guy that gets results week after week, but he's not necessarily winning as many races, but he's right up there. I completely agree with the Venom comparison. Yeah. This guy is almost the European Venom. Mm -hmm. he's, he always gets results. He's out racing this week. We hardly mentioned him <laughs> right, in the first two races. Yeah. <laughs> but he's out there driving and doing a fantastic job uh, representing Williams there. So a really strong lineup from Williams. I can't wait to see him gel over the coming races. Becoming a powerhouse. Yeah, becoming a powerhouse. Another name that we talked about there in Series 1 was Hard BR, but now we are going to be referring to it as, what is this? Sauber Zoom. Sauber Zoom. Zoom, yeah. Ah, Zoom Alfa Romeo Sauber. making an appearance for the first time. Yeah. yeah. It's exciting. So they're coupled with uh, with Sauber for the Formula for Formula One. Uh, Alfa Romeo and Sauber make an agreement there, and so their sort of joint esports team is uh, is this one with uh, which Zoom is joined. Uh, that's why it's uh, Sauber at the front of his name. Mm -hmm. Very fast driver out in out in LATAM. Um, and yeah, doing a great job there. We'll see him, I'm sure, in the Mexico playoffs, which is where we can really start to sort of look at his story and, yeah. and find out what he's about. And I'm sure Sauber is very happy to say they have the global number one in the Forza <laughs> RC right now. That's fantastic. All right, socially, we did have a bombshell tweet from Mr. Jack, and I think this was one that maybe caught a few people by surprise. Yeah, we hit on this earlier. This is Mr. Jack sort of saying, I'm stepping away from the Forza RC right now. Now, Ali, whether this means he's fully retiring or just taking some time off remains to be seen. It does remain to be seen. I certainly hope that he comes back. I think currently he's like 24th in the world uh, in the Forza RC. He's actually in very good standing to make his way to the Mexico playoffs. Mm -hmm. Uh, so hopefully he'll be able to pick himself up after a disappointing round three, uh, which I think is what caused this message, and come back fighting in round four. Come back, Mr. Jack. But we see that. We see Force One get, you know, get worked up about bad results. Right. 
But guys, it's like a quarterback. You got to forget the last yeah. series and just and move, move forward. On. Move forward. But again, we go, but we said this earlier on. I think it's so hard to find that balance between work, life, racing, the community, and, and wanting to be good. And I think that's really what these drivers, when we talked about box, you know, coming mm. into series one and how he had to find that balance. And I, that was a big storyline for us there in series one. And I think the people are starting to realize that this really can take a toll on a whole slew of different things in your life, one way or the other. Yeah. Just to pick up on that, I mean, I think this is, like, massively, I think this is a team management issue. I think that uh, TX3 needs to be looking at this. They need to be talking to their driver mm -hmm. and maintaining that mindset. Um, you know, we see teams right now like Williams out there who are doing a great job not only recruiting drivers, but also maintaining their morale, mm. giving them mm -hmm. that mental strength, like Noble have training. held box with, yep. training. Mm -hmm. And this is a, one of those times where the TX3 management need to step in and you know, give Mr. Back a pat on the back. Well, let's not forget, TX3 has lost some important players. So if they don't want that to continue, they're going to have to think about the health of their drivers. Exactly. All right, let's take it off track a little bit. That, the Forza Motorsport 7 update, the track limit. Yeah. Cool, right? Yeah, we just had a big update for Forza Motorsport 7 just last week. Track limits are a thing on Forza Motorsport 7. Uh, we've redone all of the track limits in the game, and if you want to learn exactly what the track limits are, we have this handy illumination feature where you can find out what's dirty and what's clean in Forza Motorsport 7. I love this feature, Ali, and I think this is going to have some effect on the Forza RC to come. It definitely, definitely will. Uh, the, the tracks limits have been illuminated, so you can see where they are now. Of course, you can see the blue line there. It goes yellow if you're close and red if you're over it. That's right. Um, they've been illuminated, so everyone knows where they are, but they've also been changed slightly. Yep. So they've been changed... In some uh, cases, dramatically. In some yeah. cases, dramatically, yeah. exactly. And that's a process of relearning for a lot of these drivers. Exactly. When you think about Sebring, uh, tracks like Spa, uh, tracks like Monza, these are tracks that have been redefined and it's going to be interesting to see how these Forza RC drivers take to these new limits. Oh, I think it's going to be exciting, and I think that's what these guys like. They like the challenges. I remember they're at Series 1 playoffs, and these guys were, they wanted some challenging things, and I think it really tests their potential. Uh, gives them a little bit of fire underneath them to, to perform better. Uh, the final results are in, though, and I am excited to see this shimmy out and see where it all, I mean, that race was oh, pretty yeah. interesting. All right, well, look ah, at that. Ooh. Box did get that penalty. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so that's bad news for Box, who has struggled in race one a bit, and now he was struggling in race two and gets a penalty. So he's all the way down in 10th, just two points there. Now, this, you know, Kate, this doesn't affect Box's overall results. He's going to be fine, but you wonder, as I mentioned on the desk earlier, if he's feeling vulnerable at this point. Oh, I would imagine he is, and he's one of these guys that takes it to heart. One of those guys, though, who was not having too many struggles as Lage. As we take a closer look at the leaderboard, what do you think has changed in Lage? Is it the, the time, was it time off? Is it, um, is it just him as his performance goes as we yeah. take a look at? Well, we talk about Lage missing a week, right? So he still had to fight here to pr prove and, and make sure he gets into the global, uh, to improve his global leaderboard ranking as much as possible. But put Lage in first place and he's going to be absolutely comfortable. We talk about that over and over. For raw pace, this guy's one of the fastest in the world. We see it here after two races, two wins. Mitch, the only guy who's close to him right now. I think it's really interesting. And, and Mitch, I know a lot of people were saying he was a beast there as we were fi finishing up that last race. All right, gentlemen at the desk, this one should be interesting. Anything that you think might happen that none of us would expect? Uh, well, we're going to see what Lage can do paddling back through reverse grid. It's always interesting, something that he maybe has struggled with a bit. So uh, if Box, depending on his position, if he can start to get some overtaking in there, this could be his opportunity to maybe steal 20 points. Yeah, Box now, yeah, in a sense, given an advantage in the final race when we're going to change over to a reverse grid, he'll be mid-pack. Somebody else just up ahead of Box will be Rich92F1. We've seen what he's like as an attacking driver this week, driving up from 11th up to a sort of consistent 9th, 10th position. But what can he do now he's got faster drivers behind? Can he hold them behind him? Super interesting. Well, we know we're going to Sebring. Let's find out what car you guys ended up picking that these Titans will be racing around. Down in Florida, and it is the 300ZX, that number 75, Cunningham Racing. I love the look of this car. This is, this is everything right here. This thing is so sweet. Awesome, awesome vehicle. A little bit more powerful, a little heavier, 
than the Mercury, uh, which was the other car option. And it's and ugly. That's, that's <laughs> Mercury is ugly. For me, all those old IMSA cars are <laughs> ugly. I don't like this this uh, early 90s IMSA GT cars aren't uh, the prettiest in the world. But we are going to a beautiful track, and that's Sebring. Yeah, it's so good to be back in Florida. Love this track, and it all comes down to negotiating four, five, and six, getting down to the hairpin. How can you handle turn 10? Then back down through 17, as you see it right there. And across the finish line, they'll be in this Nissan. There it is, Asix on pole. That's a, that's a good one for the Vitality driver. He's been looking for strong results recently. So uh, hopefully he'll be able to hold it out in that top position. And we talked about Box. He's right there sitting in third. So Dino already has had a, had a rough day of it. And he's going to have to face Box in his rearview mirror off the start. Lights out here in Sebring. Go, go, go down to turn one. And with these new track limits, they're going to have to stay to the outside here. Neat so many tidy. times you had seen them just almost right up against the concrete wall there. But with the new track limits being introduced, you have to <laughs> we'll keep it in the lines. We definitely do. And uh, interesting to see how they all filtered through there on turn one. As you say, yeah, a little bit wider from the apex. But I think that also made the racing a little bit cleaner. No accidents. Turn one Sebring is, is not a common occurrence. Asics remains in the lead. And that's good news for the Vitality, of course, a massive French team partnered with Renault. We'll be taking seven laps around these 17 turns, 3.74 miles. And there you see racers just hot on the hill. Davies goes all the way back in ninth. Dino's in 10th. So Dino falling way back. And this is Rossi in third. You got Chris right along in second. On board here with Rich 92 F1. We saw Rossi overtake him at the hairpin. It was a sweet overtake though. It, it allowed Rich 92 to re-enter the racing line, that flow of traffic. So it wasn't one of those situations which you so often see in a reverse grid race where a driver is almost pinned offline and a train of cars comes through. Able to defend fourth position, he's now got Veloce races on him and behind them, we're starting to see some really heavy hitters, Williams 7, Williams Roadrunner, and somewhere back there, G2 Lage and Mitch. Well, for Veloce racers, it's been actually really consistent. I know it's been the middle of the pack, but he's got to at least be somewhat pleased. He might be not ecstatic with how he's running. And there you see A6 up front. Chris riding right behind him. Rossi in third. And Rich 92 F1 in his debut, currently in fourth. The question is, will he be able to hold on and keep it? And we were talking in chat about why you, why you guys just focusing on the leaders? And I'm like, because that's what you do in motorsports. That's where the battle, you know, you're, you're, you're all out here trying to get a podium. That's where the most points are in that one, two, three. So if there's a battle between one and two, we're going to show it. If there's a battle between three, four, five, we're going to be there. Uh, if you wreck in, in 10th spot, sure, we'll give you a shout out. Maybe not the shout out you want. But, you know, this is where we live in this motorsports world. And someone's off on the side here. And that is seven way off track and he's collected races with him as well. Veloce races, we did see pressuring Rich 92 F1 for fifth, fourth position. Now at the back of the field with seven, listening to the engine, listening alone, there's no damage. And I don't believe there's any bodywork damage either. So lucky for seven in his debut for Williams Esports. Lap two, we'll have to find out from our very own Brian Eckberg what happened there in the second was lap. That on, was that on programming? So lap two of seven. Here on Sebring. Such a wonderful track. It was an old World War II Air Force field. So all those bumps, especially when you get down to 17, kind of going against the grain as you try to turn things back there on the Sunset Bend. But right now, it's all speed. There with Roadrunner in the pure red how much Nissan it, 300 you know, ZX. How much of these new track limits keeping yourself with a clean line? How does this affect a track like Sebring that 
did provide a lot of fast times. It's a big change at Sebring. We call, talked about turn one, which is what we're looking at right now. It's a little bit of a sort of car's width on the apex there, which has been ruled uh, not, a, not a place which you can race in. Another big change for this track is the entry to turn 17. And that's a... Uh, one where you have to just take a little bit of a tighter line rather than hang the car out. So there's a lot of relearning here. It's a good question, Scott, because there is a lot of relearning you have to do here at Sebring. Lap three of seven. Check in with Caden, social media. The conversation about this car is really interesting. You know, Venom said, this is one of the hardest cars we've driven in FRC. Brutally difficult, and then Lightning comes in with, of course, a little disagreement, which I love. He says, car is actually easy, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> so the, at least the conversation, they're looking at what's happening here today. Of course, our, our racing is happening again tonight with North America. But it's interesting to get their take and their perspective now. Well, I'll, I'll tell you Steve Millen's take on that. And he's the uh, driver who won the IMSA GTS category in this car in 1994. He said the turbo lag in this car was like a light switch. And uh, it was one of a very difficult car to drive. So uh, Lightning may be uh, a little bit faster than Steve Millen in the chat. Yeah, tough time hooking up. We got Brian. What the heck happened in those first couple laps? Yeah, we got an incident here that uh, between Seven and Racers, Seven just Ooh. diving into the back of Racers there. Not exactly sure uh, what happened, if he just missed his breaking point or if he was going for something ambitious there. Not exactly clear, but it looks like it turned Racers around. We also don't have a replay of this, but we, we did see contact between Mitch and Lage at the back. They ran into each other. Mitch let Lage go around as soon as he made contact. So a little bit of sportsmanship there with with Mitch after that contact. Unfortunately, we don't have a replay of that. Appreciate that, Brian. Lap four of seven. Here on Sebring, this is the final race of the day. Reverse grid, ASIC still holding on tight. So is Chris and Rossi. Davy Skills has moved up to seven. Racers drop back after that incident down to ninth. You see Mitch running along in 11th. More than halfway through, down here in Florida, and ASICs. Really starting to stretch his legs. What a great job he's doing. Keep in mind, ASICS has not won a race in the Forza Racing Championship in 2018. That's a big donut. Right now, this could be his first race win that we're seeing. ASICS, somebody who's failed to make the finals for the last couple of LAN events. An old champ, of course, winning a Mustang on Forza a few years ago. But his recent pace hasn't been great. Could this be the moment that energizes Vitality ASICS? It's nothing like standing up on the podium to recommit yourself as they come around turn 13, the tower. That's where the old tower used to be on the field back when this was a B-17 Air Force base. And they'll stretch it out through Bishop all the way down to turn 15 here in lap four. Got to keep an eye on Roadrunner and Box there in fourth and fifth. But they find themselves well behind in this reverse grid. Rich holding on in fourth. Roadrunners behind him in fifth, box in sixth. Davy Skills running along in seventh. And we're on board right now with Roadrunner. Trying to chase down Rich 92, who's actually performed very well in his debut here on the Wednesday Showdown. Yeah, I think this is a great view to just have a little moment to study what Rich 92 F1's like as a driver. This is, of course, the first time we're seeing him in the Wednesday Showdown and uh, a little bit of an unknown quantity up ahead. I mean, he doesn't have a photo, we don't have a flag for <laughs> him. You know? But now he's starting to learn a little bit more about the guy, looking like in a slightly uh, a strong racer, actually, here in the final race, holding pace fine with JSR Rossi, and if anything, looking like he might have a sniff at a podium. Yeah, there's a cone on the inside of that turn one. On, under the old track limits, that cone would be gone. <laughs> Somebody would already have taken that off to the side, so interesting. It does lead to a lot cleaner racing with these track limits, but with only seven laps, you, you don't wear someone down. You don't, you don't have enough opportunities for the guy in front of you to make mistakes and just turn into a, a sprint race. And, and to be honest with you, at times, a, a bit conventional, you know, for someone that you tune in and you, and you race all week long and you're just hoping the guy in front of you makes a mistake in that second position. 
Asik is he, he's out there. He, he's running right now. But for Rossi, can he put enough pressure on Chris to allow him to make that hundredths of a second, tenths of a second mistake? If anyone can do it, it's JSR Rossi, a, uh, a pressure cooker of a driver, <laughs> as people say. You know, he's not somebody who's going to throw a dive bomb on like, of the kind that we saw Box throwing on Roadrunner in the previous race. He's a much more considered driver. He'll pressurize the car in front and wait for them to make a mistake. And that's certainly what he's doing with Chris right now. Look at the gap from the front bumper of Rossi's car. We're on board with right now to ESC Chris up ahead. Very little there indeed. And uh, you've got to think that Chris will start showing signs of pressure, missing apexes, extending the track, and that might give Rossi an opportunity. Three wins for Rossi on the season. He's been on the podium 20 times. Can he make it 21? There's the mistake. You saw Chris clip the grass on the way out of T17, getting the car very slightly sideways. It's a half a mile an hour at most advantage that Rossi has down the home straight. Yeah. Heard him lose a little bit of grip as he caught himself up on the grass. Lap six of seven. This car looks fantastic here at Seat Ring. It looks like it absolutely belongs. With just two laps to go, Chris trying to hold off Rossi, who's taking a peek on his inside right now. This is Rossi's favorite place. He's going for the move. This is what he did on Rich 92 F1. The same move again. He loves it, and that is going to give him second place. Yeah, it looked like Chris maybe had given up that spot. That'll be interesting, but it looked like he overtook it with complete legality, <laughs> so to speak, as Chris at some point had given up, left him on the side, and a nice job able to get that to stick. So Rossi has moved up into second place in here, lap six of seven. Let's quickly bring in Brian Eckberg. What do you got for us? Loving this battle between Chris and Rossi. We've also got, a, yet again, a battle between uh, Roadrunner and Box. Here's a moment here where Box is trying to get around both him and Rich, but he can't make it stick. A little bit of contact with Roadrunner there. Looks like Box deliberately slowed down. He's like, I'm in the wrong here. I'm going to slow down and give this position back to Roadrunner. Boy, Roadrunner and Box have been tangling it up all day long. Yeah, those two really getting into each other. Box once again throwing the dive bomb on and maybe disadvantaging Roadrunner a little bit. Rich 92 F1 smart there to back those two drivers who are starting to get a little bit irritated at each other, uh, to back them into each other and make them race behind him. And what? now looking at third, beautiful. Yeah. Looks like Chris is going to give up that spot as well. An overtake by Rich, and he'll hold on. Final lap here at Sebring. Final lap of the day for EMEA. ASIC has been absolutely fantastic. Rossi has raced hard in this reverse grid. He's not had great fortune in our first two races. But here in this final lap, can he hold on? Second, third, and fourth starting to pile up as Asik is running away. That's a run for Rich on the final lap down towards the hairpin. Rossi might have to go defensive here, and he does pull to the inside line. So Rich looking to the outside. Rossi's overcooked it, though, on the brakes. You can see him locking up. And the lockup is going to cost him some momentum. Can Chris? No, that's Rich. Neck and neck down the straight. Let's Rossi see. and Rich. Every bit of track being used, and Rich is deep now on the brakes yep. and off the track. He was giving it everything he had to try to jump up into second place. And in his debut, he has cost himself a podium here in our reverse grid on Sebring. This is why you can't fall in love with them. You know, they, they disappoint you, Scott. <laughs> it's, a, it's a shame. It's a shame. I, I'm loving seeing Rich 92 out here setting the Forza RC on fire. A shame that he couldn't land that second position. And sometimes you just got to pump the brakes, fall in line, especially when you're going up against someone like Rossi, who's going to hold on to second here. Rich falling all the way back into seventh place. He was firmly in control in third. He had Rossi in front of him, Chris behind him. And the newcomer absolutely will be 
sick when he goes back and looks at this at what could have been in his debut here on the Wednesday showdown. He could have been standing on the podium, but instead he's going to be watching as he's all the way back. <laughs> the, the, the real tip here is don't let this guy fall in love with you. Because uh, next thing you know. It's the no, alley I mean, curse. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you're on the inside. You're trying yeah. to carry all that momentum. But the problem is, you said it, you said it best, you're overcooked and you're on the wrong line. You're, you're, you're to the inside there, which is even a bigger disadvantage. Yeah, and I, I don't know for sure, but I wonder if he had a little contact at the back. It's hard to tell from the footage we were looking at inside yeah. whether he had a little contact that pushed him or if he just missed his braking zone. But you're right, he wasn't in a great position to begin with. I, I didn't see those red lights coming, coming, I mean, coming along the back until Rossi had way slowed down. I mean, he was almost a half a second late on the brake. Mm. It, was, it was a long way, wasn't it? And I wonder if there's a little bit of red mist there. You know, the, the two had been side by side <laughs> yeah. for yeah. a while. The adrenaline's flowing, and he's thinking, you know what, maybe I can go... 10 meters later, 10 meters later on the break. It's all I need. And you see him overcook it. There's a little lock up there as if well. If you're on the outside, maybe you're okay with that, right? But when you're on the inside, and you're not going to be able to hit that apex anyway with, with, with the clean line. Yeah. You're going to be pushing somebody mistake. wide for sure coming yeah. out of an inside line like that. So got to feel bad for him. But, hey, welcome to the Forts RC, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the replay here, our final race of the day here in Europe. And it was a good one down on Sebring. There's that contact we saw a little bit earlier with racers in seven. Uh, kind of screwed up both of their races early on. And then, yeah, we saw Box and Roadrunner getting into it again. And I think Box realized he was in the wrong year. I'm going to give this position back to Roadrunner. Uh, and well, yeah. you saw how bad that penalty cost him earlier in race yeah. number two. You don't want to fall all the way down again. And here's that great battle between Chris and Rossi just fighting it out for the podium there. Uh, I love seeing this. And there's Rich in the mix as well. You see he was gaining in confidence at this point in the race, you know, building on those positions, coming up from fourth into third. There it, got is. The yeah, there it is. To throw this move. <laughs> Again, I, it, you saw the car get a little bit out of shape there. I don't know if that's a result of contact or if he just missed it. Here's, here's the angle. Ooh, yeah, I think he might have get, gotten tapped there. It's hard to know 100%. You know the adjudicators will be looking at that. But Wow. Huh. One other thing, guys. So Chris might have, yeah. might have, might have caused this yeah. whole thing. Yeah. Chris might have. Uh, huh. I know they're going to be looking at that. But let's not forget, we got to be feeling really good for ASICs right now. He yeah. won a race. Yes. Fantastic <laughs> result for him, you know. And this is a guy that had one of those sort of Twitter breakdowns a few weeks ago saying, I I'm not feeling this. I'm struggling. Here he comes back. Granted, it's reverse grid. I don't care. A win is a win. Well done, ASICs. And, you know, he's a good friend of Mr. Jack as well. Those two both coming from the French Forza scene. Uh, they were chatting to each other about, you know, Mr. Jack deciding to step back from the Forza Racing Championship. So great to see ASICs. Yeah, looking like he's really rediscovering his pace and his love for the game. Mm -hmm. This could be provisionally his first win. Let's take a look at the rest of the grid with Kate. Yeah, it is true. It, it's neat to see these guys kind of have that little bout of confidence, and that's really all it is to kind of get back up on the horse or really get back in the game, if you will, in this case. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the provisional leader, the provisional results that we have here today. ASICS is that first win, Rossi in second, Chris there in third, RR in fourth, Box in fifth, uh, Davy Skills in sixth, and that heartbreaking Ridge 92 and seventh. I think on, I think in the chat, everybody <laughs> was kind of crossing their fingers for them. So on and so forth. Gentlemen, I don't know. This was one of those things that you kind of have to, you as you, Ali, as you said, you want to love these guys, but you know, then they let you down. I mean, as it kind of goes, that's kind of what this is all about. Racing is racing. You never know who's going to win, right? You don't know. You never know who's going to win at the end. You know, I, I get excited about these stories sometimes. You know, I, I love watching the fastest people in the game race against each other, but uh, I also love watching new people join the ranks. And uh, that's what we were looking at today. There's always a maturing process with these drivers, though. Especially to make your debut here in, in Europe of all places where we, we know to get into that lobby of 12 is one of the toughest things to do in the FRC. And unfortunately, I don't think him and Chris, <laughs> if that was, if that, if he slingshot him, a little shake and bake there, uh, then yeah, they're, they're not going to be buds. They go through rivalries, don't they, these drivers? Remember when Mitch first came along and he was you know, Rossi's big rival and we were talking about those two? Now Mitch's rival is probably Lage or, you know, Roadrunner, the people at the very, very top of the Forza Racing Championship. 
Rich 92 F1, he's new on the scene, he's new in the lobby, and I would say his first rival might be ESC Chris. You know, they're fighting at the back, but definitely those two starting to get quite punchy when they're around each other. Yeah, so Kate, the interesting thing here is going to be, will Chris's spot hold or will he be penalized? And we are going to be finding out in just a bit. But before that, it is a champ versus a champ. We have Joseph Newgarden defending IndyCar Series champ. And, of course, Tanner Faust, the Global Rallycross champ as well. They're going head-to-head -head in battles, not only in the car, but also with a few other things. Check it out. <laughs> For this challenge, I've chosen an unlikely beast. It's a 1994 Land Rover Defender. And Joseph, as a back-to-back -back champion of a few different series, I know that defending your championship is sometimes more difficult than getting that first one. So don't let this get in your head. It is a Defender. If you forget that, just check out the license plate. It's Defender. Now, to make it a little more interesting, yeah. I'm actually going to have you try and spell some names of manufacturers. So I'm gonna read off a name, you're gonna spell it back while you're driving. If you spell it correct, you're good. If, if you spell it wrong, you're gonna lose a second of lap time. I'm gonna start with an easy one. Acura. A-C-U-R-A. -A. What about Brabham? Uh, B-R-A... U-H... Uh, no. You should look at the road, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not spelled up there. Bugatti. Uh, B U G. I, I hit the brakes whenever I'm. <laughs> Double consonants kill me. Uh, B U G G or B U G A T T I. Chevrolet. That one's pretty simple. C H E V uh, E R O L E T. What? No, wait, sorry. You can say it again. Chevrolet? Oh, Chevrolet, I'm building yeah. a wall. Can you spell Ferrari? That's all I want to know. Yeah, well, let me finish the corner. <laughs> Damn it, I sucked on the corner too. <laughs> it's almost like I should take the second on the corner instead of the F E R R. There's two R's in the beginning. A R. You're close. You're so close. Hi. What about Hyundai? Can you can you spell? Hyundai H uh, Y U N D A I. What about Jaguar? Uh, J A G U A R. Yeah, you got that one. All right, we'll keep it easy to start off with Lotus. L-O-T-U-S. That's got to be the best one on there. Good. Peugeot. Uh, P oh, man, that's really difficult. P-U-G. It starts with a P, yes. O-E-T. Maserati. I'm just going to go for speed and, like, try and not worry just about ignore those. ignore me. No, I'll Inside. spell it for you. M-A-S-E-R-A-T-I. McLaren. M-C-L-A-E. Oh, I'm sorry. M C L A R E N. Pagani. What is it? Pagani. Uh, Pagani. P A G O N I. A Lamborghini. Oh my gosh. L A M B O R. G-H-I-N-I. Oh, that was a good one. Did I get in there? Excellent. Yeah, okay, here's an easy one. Koenigsegg. Oh, oh yeah, that's simple. I'm gonna get that wrong. I should just skip it, but I'll try. K-O. Uh, I'm driving, buddy. I can't answer this. Renault. R -E -N. Throw it at me. Why can't I spell Renault while I'm driving? R-E-N. Uh... I don't even remember right now. Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi? Go. M I T S U B. Go, quick. M I T Go. Mitsu S U B I S H I. Let's see, you got uh, oh one, two, three, four, five correct, and one. Two, three, four. Incorrect for a time of 204.4. What was my time? 204.4. Oh! oh, the worst seller in the world. Get
That's it. <laughs> <laughs>that just made me laugh so hard. I think they actually gave it Tanner the easier words and Joseph still won. I don't know what that says about Tanner. Love you. The closest <laughs> battle yet though. <laughs> Joseph now is his 2-0. Uh, Tanner really yeah. has to step up his game in this champ versus champ. I mean, we'll see how it goes down. What, what was the hardest word for you? Oh, I would never have been able to do Peugeot. Forget no. it. I can't spell it now, and I saw the answer. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, <laughs> True point. <laughs> I think you were looking at Lamborghini yeah. and said Koenigsegg. There's an L in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Yeah. I could do HSV. I could okay. do BMW. Yep. Pretty Acura good. was good. That yeah. was a good start. Ford. Yeah. Ford. Yeah. I'd be okay with Ford. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, in eighth grade, I almost won the spelling bee. I did not. I missed. <laughs> it was scissors. Scissors got me. So those double consonants, oh. I get it. Those ones are tough. But I, that would have been hard while driving, too. Okay. Anyways. Brian, this is your, your time of the day. The it's community. my time of the day. Yeah, community it's point. time and for some awesome liveries. Yeah, one that is everyone's favorite. We're going to kick it off with uh, from last week. Yeah, so you guys know that the theme of this week has been the 90s. We have a forum contest happening in the Forza Forums where we have livery contests where people are designing their own liveries. And we asked them, hey, give us some 90s themes. And you remember Screamies last week, Allie, had that awesome 80s theme. Gorgeous with the yeah. black and the neon mm -hmm. colors. Now he's got this gorgeous 90s theme with the brick. It's the same theme we're using for, for promo. It looks awesome. I like it. It's it's a dedication to teal that you yes. just don't see <laughs> these days. That's right. I think this, this takes us back to Saved by the Bell, right? I'm I sure mean, we all have. Ali, how are your sure. 90s different than our 90s? He was a baby. <laughs> he was an infant. That's how it was different. Yeah. <laughs> I was drinking beer and he was an infant. Everything was, <laughs> was very large. <laughs> Everything being big. Um, that yeah, you know, Rugrats, Nickelodeon, yeah. that you, kind of Okay, stuff. so those, yeah, those are, the, those are my jam. <laughs> so, yeah, what would you do? Double Dare, all those things. Okay, the next step, <laughs> what do we got next? The buddy, uh, buddy Munter. Now, we've seen Buddy uh, before. Uh, he's got a nice musictelevision.com theme. Yeah. Early, early internet, late 90s, I love that. Uh, great looking here. Ali, party like it's 1999. Your your theme. Yeah, I mean, I I distinctly remember backing up all of my uh, all of my stuff so I wouldn't get the millennium bug. That's right, you know? Y2K baby. <laughs> oh, that did have Y2K. Oh my gosh, yeah, that was Y2K. also the 90s. Holy cow! Did you guys stock up on bread? <laughs> and fresh water. Somehow got into my water. It's the silk cut, a classic race livery. Yeah. There's simplicity here, but it's it's a classic, instantly Beautiful. recognizable alley. Yeah, it's an incredible one, isn't it? It's the Jaguar livery and, and such a such an emotive design as well. You kind of you just see it and it's just you know motorsport and you're just back there and, and, and it's thinking a, about Le Mans. A very aggressive pinkish purple there. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Next up we have celebrating the 90s private custard. Well done with oh. the Momo design. Oh. Oh, look this at that guy. Classic rally. I love the look of this. Absolutely. That wants to look like it just wants to get out. Get out and drive. Go yeah. out in the woods. Go have a have a good time. You know, back then it was all about whether you were a Subaru or a Mitsubishi fan, right? That's right. Had Tommy Mackinnon against Colin McRae. Yuha Kankunen. Right. That's it. This, Crystal Pepsi, this, wow. baby. Crystal Pepsi oh, is not... Looking, wow. let's, let's just break down the fact it's not just Pepsi. No. But it's Crystal Pepsi. The 90s Can we have a comeback? <laughs> it's amazing. The motion fire Crystal Pepsi a was delicious. I don't care what anybody says. I don't remember that. I don't, I don't know if they bothered exporting it. They didn't, they didn't <laughs> yeah, put it in your no. bottle. Yeah, right. <laughs> slow motion fire. <laughs> well done, slow motion fire. Very, very well done. And lastly, we have PTG5. Fox. Well, we're in Seattle, Nirvana. of course. This is, uh, this is a great tribute Run. to uh, Nirvana, of course. There's Kurt Angle. Never heard of them. Uh, yeah, it's before also, your time. they did not <laughs> take it over there to you. Sub Pop, we got all sorts of uh, uh, Seattle references here. Love the Nirvana logo. Well done, PTG Fox. Uh, love all of these liveries, and you guys can get involved in this. We're doing a one for the 2000s next. I don't even know what on earth would represent the 2000s at this point. I'm trying to think, but what, where were you guys in? in uh, shake weight. <laughs> shake shake weight. <laughs> That's what I want. I want a MySpace livery. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we do, yes. <laughs> we do have a poll where you get a chance to vote for your favorite livery. Make sure you go to watch.forza.rc.com. But now it is time for those final results. They are in, and I think... Ah... Five second penalty. You know, actually on social, someone asked what had happened to Lage, and we knew that obviously the reverse grade was going to be difficult on a track like Sebring, but obviously something did go down. Lage and Mitch, right? Both yeah. of those dropped off the back of the pack in lap one. We didn't see the incident. I think we, we don't think we caught it. Um, that says to me, though, the story here is that Lage threw a move on Mitch. 
and that didn't work out. Yeah, and he let him buy. We saw it, actually. One of the other guys had it. Uh, we didn't have it in our replay system, so we couldn't show it. But that's exactly what happened. They got into e each other, uh, and then Lage just let Mitch go by and get that extra point. So good, good, fair play from Lage. But yeah, you would. I, I think both of them were expecting and hoping for better results than this. 100%. And I think if there is one. This is the final result as, as is, but there is another incident that we are going to be checking out between Roadrunner uh, Racers and Seven. Okay. So we will be circling back around uh, to that as well. But right now, here's as it stands. Well, we do know, as we talked about on the desk, that Asics won. So congratulations, officially, his first series win. That's great. That's fantastic for him. And it's been such a long time coming <laughs> as well. He's been here all year. Oh, yeah. so such cool. a top driver and never winning. So I mean, yeah, pretty, Asics, pretty I want to know what you did to celebrate back there at, in your homeland. What, <laughs> what were you doing to celebrate that win? Because I think that that really is it's, it's something, it's a good pat on the back for sure. All right, it's time for the global leaderboard. Let's go ahead and take a look, a closer look at where we stand now. Yeah, no points for Lage there. That's got to be a disappointment. Of course, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't much matter in the grand scheme of things today because he won his first two races. Yeah. But uh, you know he doesn't like seeing a red zero there. <laughs> it's incredible that he still won it, isn't it? After getting that big red zero, like penalty and last place, um, it shows though, how much the points can condense. So, of course, a higher scoring round this time for second and third and fourth and all these drivers behind. Uh, Rich 92 F1 only managing 11th in total as well, so not managing to get quite as high as we were hoping for him. And we look at Box there in seventh place, right? That's not where we expected him. He started mm. in fourth, had some trouble throughout oh. the day, ends up in seventh. He's got to be a little bit dis disappointed with that result. And one thing to note is Roadrunner was in third, and if that incident does come back that it kind of shimmies the points differently, that will have a, an impact on that leaderboard. So we'll have to circle back around and get those out to you as well. At this point, coming up, you know, we have a lot coming up within our Forza RC uh, showdown. We, of course, we have the North America showdown tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific. All of you who just watched, if you want to stay up into the wee hours and come join us on social media and give us your takeaways from today already. And, of course, to the guys who were involved in our chat, uh, giving us a rundown, uh, prepping for tonight's races again at 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, right here at watch.forzarc.com. And of course, we have rival boosters and, and a, a closer look at that of Series 2. We only have one more Wednesday showdown. And we head on over to Mexico City. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Who's ready for it? It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. We're, you know, we're coming into the second half of the championship. The stories are evolving. The drivers are starting to push that little bit more. Lage is making mistakes. Box is off the paint. What's going on? We've got guys on the <laughs> bubble when you think of a commando who's still maybe not 100% going to Mexico City yet. So there's still more to play out in EMEA that I really like. Uh, I think next week's EMEA playoffs are going to be vibrant. Yeah. They're going to be aggressive. <laughs> and it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. What a choice of word that was. Vibrant. <laughs> vibrant. Just like well, the 90s. Well, speaking of vibrant, speaking of the 90s, speaking mm -hmm. of vibrant, we also have the results of those liveries. Drum roll, please. Oh. oh. Well done, PTG Fox. PTG hey. Fox. Is that what you thought, guys? Uh, it could have gone in a lot of different ways. Uh, I, I think, you know, the fact that uh, he's, he's definitely ref referencing a very famous band, very famous iconic music figure worked in his favor here, and it's a gorgeous design. It really is. But I, I love to see things which support the music industry as well, you know, up-and-coming artists and small bands That's like right. Nirvana. That's yeah. right. I was thinking Crystal Pepsi was going to take oh, it. Oh, we All right, our final thoughts here today, gentlemen. Did anything, just a quick takeaway for you, anything stand out? Uh, again, uh, congrats to ASICS. Well done. Uh, I call them ASICS. I think it's ASICS. <laughs> Is it ASICS? ASICS. Anyway, congrats. Well tomato, done on tomato. your first Forza yeah. RC win. Uh, you know, like, and like we said, we're looking forward to tonight. A lot of uh, interesting storylines story in NA. Uh, and man, next week, I can't wait. There's still so much to play for. There's still a lot to play for. I mean, my takeaway from this week, though, is Rich 92 F1. You know, he tried it. He didn't <laughs> quite manage it. Um, but he'll be back. And I'm sure he'll be back in 2019 and throughout the 2018 season. So a story that I'm super enjoying right now. Yeah, I had my fingers crossed for him as well. But we have had so much fun with everyone here with the MEA. And we look forward to our event here tonight with the North America. Thanks to everyone who joined us for our sponsors, Plantronics and Play Seats. To our cast of hundreds behind that are controlling the cameras, the videos, everything else going on behind the scenes. Of course, Ali Tack, Scott Cole, Brian Eckert, and myself, Kate Osborne. We thank you for joining us. Make sure you join us for NA tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific at watch.forzarc.com. Um.